Notion just released a brand new feature, Notion Forms. This new block type allows you to create and customize forms within Notion that you can share with absolutely anyone. It doesn't matter if they use Notion or not, you can still collect their response. These forms are super customizable and Notion has launched with a ton of awesome functionality. In this video, I'll be covering this new feature in depth so you can start building your own forms right away. A couple of other things I want to briefly mention is that Notion Forms is a completely free feature so anyone with a free Notion account can create forms it is not a paid feature. Another thing to know is that forms can only be edited on desktops. So you cannot create a form on the mobile app, but you can view the responses and fill out a form on the mobile app. But unfortunately, currently you can only actually edit or create your form on a desktop. And if you're enjoying the video so far, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming Notion tutorials. So to add a form, you can simply type forward slash form and you'll see this new block type appear under database. So a form is a type of database. So you'll want to select this to add a form and this is what will appear on the page. So a new database will be added and there's going to be two tabs automatically added to the database. You've got the form builder, which is where you're actually going to build your form and add in all of the questions. And then you also have a second tab, which is where your responses will show. So anytime someone completes your form, a new row will be added to this table and it will show all of their responses to the different questions. So this type of table is probably quite familiar to you if you've used Notion databases before. This is simply just a table view database and each property on the table. So for example, this one is question one. This property is going to collect the response for question one on the form. So it's quite easy to collect the responses. So let's start building a form and then I can show you all of the different question types available and how the form actually collects and collates the responses on the responses tab. So we're going to start by giving our form a name. So let's just say that you are a moving company and this is going to be a new customer inquiry form. You can also give the form an icon and a cover photo if you wish. So you can click on here to add a cover photo. So let's maybe look for a moving van or a moving box like this one. And if you want a cover, you can also add one let's just add a plain colored background so it just makes the form look a little bit nicer you can also add a description if it's necessary so you can use this to add a purpose for the form if you need to so let's just add a quick description so I've just quickly added this description here so currently this form can only be filled out by people who are members of my notion so this is my notion account so you can actually add people as a member to your notion account so with this setting only people that are part of my notion account can actually fill out this form but if if you want anybody to be able to fill this out, you can click on change. And as you can see, it currently says who can fill it out? Anyone at my Notion account. So anyone that is a member of my Notion account with a link, but you can click on here and we can actually change it to anyone on the web with a link. So that just means you can send anybody on the internet a link to this form and they can fill it out and they don't need to have a Notion account, which is really awesome as well. So let's click on that one to make it a public form. Once I've done that, there are a few different options. So you can either choose to keep Notion's branding or turn it off. So as you can see, if you leave it toggled on in the corner, it will show this made with Notion button. It's up to you if you want to see that or not so you can toggle it off if you don't want the notion branding to appear and this toggle here is for anonymous responses so as you can see it's grayed out you can't switch it off and that's because for public forms all responses are automatically anonymous but if we actually change this to anyone at my notion with a link so therefore only members of my notion you can choose to either toggle on or off anonymous responses so for example if you're a team that uses notion and you've got a team space you may sometimes want to toggle on anonymous responses so for example if maybe you've got a form where people can submit feedback about other team members. It might be useful to have anonymous on so that people will feel more comfortable providing their honest thoughts. But other times you might want to see who has actually submitted the response. But as I said, if you set it to this public option, all submissions for these forms will be anonymous by default. And you can also change it to no access if you want to close down the form. And when you do want to share the form with people, you can simply click this link here to copy the form and send that to anyone you like and they'll be able to view the form. So now that we've gone over the share settings, let's actually build our form. So the form will always come with two default questions. If you don't want to use these questions, you can simply click on here and just select delete. But for now, we're actually going to keep them and just amend them. Just before we jump back to the tutorial, I want to let you know about my second brain template. This powerful productivity system is the best way to organize your tasks, notes, projects, and goals, and is based on productivity methods that actually 
actually work. Hundreds of people have already purchased the template and are now more productive than ever. It also has tons of five star reviews from people that have used it. I'll leave a link in the description box below if you're interested. That's all, back to the tutorial. So let's change the first question. So I'm just gonna delete this and we're gonna put the name here of our first question. So let's start with what is your name? So that is our first question and the person filling out the form can then input their name in here. Now, if you actually click on here, it's gonna actually give you a few different options. So firstly, we can set this question to be required, which means the person isn't able to submit the form unless they filled out this question. This one's pretty important. So let's toggle on required. You can also add a description to a question. So if I toggle that on, as you can see, this little description section appears here. So depending on the question, sometimes you might want to add further information. So it might be quite useful, but for this question, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna toggle off description because we don't need one. You can then toggle on or off this long answer. So as you can see here, we've only got a small space to input our answer. For this question, that's perfectly fine because you're not gonna have a really long answer for this question. But if you do think that someone might want to write lots of text or a full paragraph, you can toggle this on. And as you can see, it just provides some more space for them to write their answer. This one, we're gonna leave it toggled off. Then we have the question type. So this one is currently set to title. Now, if I just click back and go onto our responses tab, as you can see, question one, which is what is your name, is showing here in the first column. And this is actually the title row of a column. As I said, if you've used Notion databases before, then you're probably familiar with the first title column. And this is where the name of the respondent is gonna appear. This property is essentially linked to this question. And because this is the first question, it is automatically set to be the title type. And titles are always text properties. But when we're adding questions, you can actually click on here to change the type of question. As you can see, there are a ton of different types of questions. We've got text, multiple choice, dates, person, which is where you can actually select from your team members. So you can only use this one if your form is within a team space. So you can actually select different members from the team as your answer. We've got files and media, number, checkbox, email, URL, and phone. So most of these are pretty self-explanatory. It just allows the respondent to input one of these many different types of questions. So most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I am gonna show you an example for each of these. This view linked property is where you can actually view which property in the responses tab is linked to this question. So if I click on here, it is the what is your name property with a type of title. And we currently have this sync with property name switched on, which essentially means the name of the question here is going to be the name of this linked property. But sometimes you might want the property to have a different name. So if we toggle this off, I can actually just click on here and change the name. So instead of having what is your name, I might just name it name, mainly just because it's a little bit shorter. So it'll be easier for me in the responses table just to see the title as name. If I click back, so we now have the question here, what is your name? And if I go on the responses tab, as you can see, this property now is just called name. So it just makes a bit more sense for the table. So the second question is currently set as a multiple choice. So let's just change the name of the question to what is your home type? And then we can just update these option names for the answers to this question. So let's start with house, ground floor apartment. And if I click on here, let's set this to required as well. So as you can see, it now says question type is multiple choice. And I can also click on the linked property. And as you can see, this is actually set as a select property. So each of the different options that you add as a multiple choice, it will add that as an option within the select property. So if you're familiar with Notion databases, you'll know that select property only allow you to select one of these options. So you'll only be able to select one of these options within the question. If you want them to be able to select as many of these as they want, then you'll just want to change this to a multi-select property and that will allow them to select as many of these as they want. For this question, you're only gonna have one of these home types. So I'm actually gonna change it back to select, but I just wanted to show you how that works if you did want people to be able to select multiple options. Now to add another question, you can simply click on this button here and it's gonna ask you which type you want to select. Now you'll notice now that the person property is grayed out and that is because this is actually a public form. So I changed it here to be a public form and you actually can't use the person property on a public form. You can only use it on the private forms that are within a team space or a workspace. And that's just because this property type allows you to select one of the people within the workspace. So obviously it doesn't make sense for a public form, which is why that's grayed out. For the next question, let's add a date 
property. And let's see, when is your move date? So when the respondent is filling out this question, they're gonna get a calendar and it's gonna allow them to select a date. So let's put this one as required. And as you can see with under question options for a date property, there are a couple more options here. So you can firstly toggle on end date. So if you want the respondent to be able to input a date range rather than just a single date, you'll want to toggle this on. It's completely up to you depending on what the question is. For this one, it doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna leave it toggle off. And if you also want them to be able to include a time, then you'll want to toggle this on as well. Otherwise they're only gonna be able to select a date. For this one, I think we'll keep time toggled on and I'm just gonna also add a description just to tell them to include the date and the time like this. Let's add another question. And this one is gonna be a number and let's ask them how many bedrooms they have. So this is only gonna allow them to input a number and let's put that one as required. So as you can see, the question type is now number. If you want to move your questions around at any point, you can simply just click on them and drag them and it will allow you to move them. And if you want to add a question in between other questions, if you just hover in between, you'll see this little plus symbol appear here and that'll allow you to add a question in between the previous question. So it's really easy to actually customize the layout. Let's add another question. Let's now add a checkbox question. So this one is gonna be, do you need us to provide moving boxes? Boxes. So with the checkbox questions, they do only allow you to either select or not select a checkbox. So you can give the checkbox a label. I'm just going to put yes as the label but you can leave it blank so one thing to know is that you can't add multiple check boxes under this question it will only allow you to add one check box if you want them to be able to select from multiple options then you'll want to go with this multiple choice question property rather than a check box check boxes are just for yes or no questions essentially so they can either check the check box or not these ones at the bottom are really useful for collecting contact information so for example let's just add this email where they can put their email address and let's also add the phone one as well if you want to be able to collect a url for example if you want to ask people what their website is you can add this one and it allows them to input a url but that doesn't really make sense for this form so i'm just going to delete that one the only other property that we haven't looked at is the files and media so if you click on that it will allow the respondent to actually upload a file now there is a size limit of 100 megabytes and they can only upload up to 10 files so this may be useful for some form types but for this one it doesn't make sense so I'm gonna delete this one but I just wanted to show you what it looks like and just for a second I'm gonna switch the form back to just being a private form just for our member space so I can show you the person type so if I click on here as you can see the person type is now available so I can click on that this question will bring up a list of all the team members and you can select one of the people now there is one extra setting with this question type and it is the max selection so it's currently set to unlimited which means you can select as many people from the team as you like but if you want them to only be able to select one person you can change this to one currently these are the only two options either one or unlimited i'm hoping in future they add more options so that you can maybe select two or three or whatever you want so again this doesn't make sense for this form so i'm going to delete that one and let's just change this back to being a public form so that is the form i'm pretty happy with the questions that we've got so now we can add a few more customization settings so if you click on the three dots here it's going to bring up a few more details so so firstly, you can actually use this button here to add another question. You can also run automations on forms. Now, I'm not gonna go through this in depth. Automations are actually a paid Notion feature. So you can only use the automations if you have a paid Notion account. They essentially allow you to add a trigger. So for example, when a property is edited, you could add an action. At some point, I will film an in-depth video on automations, but that is a whole nother video in itself. So I'm not gonna go through that in depth. And there is also a customized form option. So I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see, firstly, we can customize the submit button so when you fill out the form there is a submit button at the bottom and we can actually customize the color and the text that is on the button so for the colors it's currently set to default which is black but you can select any of these colors let's leave it as default for now and you can also change the text that appears on the button so as you can see it currently says submit but you can type in anything that you want here to appear on your button and if you want a confirmation message to display on the screen once the respondent has clicked submit you can input that here so let's give it a title let's put thank you for your response 
and you can also add a message here for example we'll get back to you shortly feel free to add whatever you want here then we can click on preview to see a preview of our form so here is what the form looks like so as you can see it's just bringing up all of our questions and then we have the submit button here at the bottom so I'm just going to fill this out to collect a response so let me just quickly fill this out so when we click on this move date one as I said earlier you it will actually bring up a calendar so you can select the date and input the time we have the checkbox and you can input your email and phone here and once you've completed the form we'll click the submit button and this is what the confirmation page looks like and it's firstly showing the confirmation message that we inputted and it will also allow the respondent to input their email address and it will send them a copy of their response so now back over in notion if i click on the responses tab as you can see it has collected that response that i just submitted so my name is appearing in the name column it will show who the respondent is so as i said for public forms it's always going to display as anonymous so every single person will just come up as anonymous Anonymous, but if you had the setting set as who can fill it out anyone at your notion with the link so that just means anyone that is a member on your team space can fill this out if you have this toggled on then it will show as anonymous just like this however if you have this toggled off it will simply just show who submitted that response and that will show up here under the respondent column as you can see each of these properties corresponds to one of the questions and it's going to input all of those details into this table now you can actually customize this responses page as much as you want so you can add further properties you can change the layout of this database so for example for a form like this I think it would be really useful to have a property called status where it shows the status of this inquiry so whether we've contacted that person if they've booked in etc so let's click on here to add another property and I'm going to add a status property and I can actually customize the names of these statuses so for example let's change this one to new inquiry we can have contacted no answer so I've just added a few different options here to select from so this is a property that just displays on our responses table if you add a property to this table it's not going to add it to your form as a question you're only going to add questions if you physically add a question on here so this property can be used just for me to track if it's a new inquiry if I've contacted that person and so on let's maybe move it to right to the start so that it's easy to see and you can add as many properties as you like for example you might want to add a property for the date that you've actually booked them in etc you can also change the layout of this table so if you don't want to see it as a table like this you could for example change it to a gallery view so to do that let's click on the three dots here here, select layout and let's change it to a gallery but you can pick from any of these layouts for example it might make sense to put it on a calendar or a board view or so on but I'm gonna click on gallery which then changes it to look like this let's just customize this a little bit so I'm gonna toggle off show database title so we don't see this title here let's change the card preview to none so that we get rid of that blank space and if I click back under properties I can display some of the properties on the card so for example it'd be nice to see the status of this inquiry maybe let's also add their home type on there and let's also add the move date so that I can see when this is required for so you can also change the order of these let's put the status at the bottom so this is how it would display on the card so in this format every time someone submits a response a card like this is going to pop up on here so I can easily see all of the different responses and when you click on it that that's when you're going to see all of the different information and you can also use this page maybe to take notes so if you do contact them you could add some notes on here so it's really really useful in this format you could also switch this to a board view so you can sort between the different statuses so for example let's click on here and change the layout to board and as you can see these are now being grouped based on the status so I've only got the one response here so it's under new inquiry but you'd have a column like this for each of the different statuses in a row which is really useful and again if you want to show more details on the card you can just go under properties and just show whichever details you want to display on the card like this so once you're happy with your form you'll want to click on the share form button and this is where you can actually grab the link so you can copy the link to the form here and then you can send this to whoever you want to fill out the form so remember if you set the who can fill it out to public anybody can respond to the form it doesn't matter if they have a notion account or not it will simply just bring up a web page and allow them to complete the form I actually set up this creative code video request form so if you do want to try out 
about filling out an ocean form and you want to leave me a video request then i will leave the link to this form in the description box below so you can simply just fill out whatever request you have for the creative cove notion channel and click submit and then i will have a look at the responses later so that is the new forms feature within notion if you want to be even more productive then make sure you check out my second brain template which is an advanced productivity system it has tons of five star reviews from people that have used it you can grab this template over on my store i'll leave a link in the description box below